Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to share with you two powerful tools and one amazing trick to remove halos while you're making a selection or masking. So here we have our subject and first of all, let's start with making a selection or mask it out. So simply select a selection tool and you can use your favorite tool to do that. I'm going to use select and mask. So select any selection tool and then click on select and mask at the top. Now once you do that, I want to see it in a black background. So change the view from onion skin to on black. It will show your subject on a black background. Now when the opacity is zero, everything shows up irrespective of whatever you have selected or not. Now when the opacity is at 100, only the selected area shows up. Now since we have not selected anything, nothing shows up. Let's decrease it to somewhere around 67-ish. That's fine. Take the quick selection tool at the top and just paint on our subject. It will make a selection of her. Now that the selection seems to be perfect, let's zoom into her hair and then select the Refine Edge tool second over here and then simply paint on the edges. Now we are done, but as you can see, if I increase the opacity all the way to 100, you will notice the hair not looking quite right in the background. However, have a look right here. A little bit of area is left out, no problem at all. We're going to select the quick selection tool and add it up. That's not a problem, but if you have a look closely, there's a white halo, right, around her sweater. And we're gonna fix that using those tools. First of all, let me improve this area. That's perfect. Now, once you're satisfied with this, once you get the most you can from here, just hit OK. But before you hit OK, always make sure that output is layer mask. If you're using decontaminate colors, then it should be new layer with a layer mask. So make sure it's layer mask for this purpose, hit OK. So now that we have our subject with a layer mask and in the background, let's put black. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and we can choose black so that we can see everything clearly. Let's drag it and drop it under the subject. Now we will deal with hair later. Right now I'm going to show you these two tools that I was talking to you about. So the first tool surprisingly is, guess what? The burn tool. Yes, you heard it right. The burn tool. And how do we apply that? Well, select the burn tool first of all. If you cannot see the burn tool, just click and hold in the dodge tool group. It will be there. Dodge tool, burn tool and sponge tool. And select the burn tool. Now when you do select the burn tool, make sure the mask is selected right here. And the range can be shadows. You can control the strength by using the exposure slider. Now see what happens. I'm going to make the mask visible by holding the alt or option and click on the mask. See the excess, right? All you have to do, just paint. See, it removes the excess and it doesn't let you paint inside the subject. No matter how much you try, it just won't paint given that shadows is selected inside of the range, right? We're going to talk about midtones and highlights too. But if shadows is selected, it's only going to remove the excess or the colors which are closer to black. Have a look right here. It's going to remove those. And you can control the strength by increasing or decreasing the exposure. So if you increase it to 100, it will be of a higher intensity. So it will rapidly remove all of them. And if you reduce it to 20% or something like that, you're going to have to paint a couple more times and it's going to give you more control over how much you want to remove. Now, have a look at it. Isn't that wonderful? Now, actually, I told you I'm going to show you two tools, right? But I actually have three tools for you. Now, first of all, let's make the subject visible by holding the Alt or Option. Click on the mask and just start painting from here. Right now, keep in mind that you're still painting on the mask. No harm is being done to the subject. So easily, we are removing those white areas. Let's increase the exposure right here. Very easy. And we have removed the excess. However, there's one little problem. We'll talk about the hair later. Don't worry about it right now. The problem is, if I hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask, make it visible, some areas of the sweater were left out. So how do we paint that back? Just use the opposite tool of the Burn tool and that is the Dodge tool. So hold and you will see the Dodge tool right here. You can also select the highlights, the opposite of shadows, the highlights in this case. And you can equally control the exposure. So paint on this. It won't let you paint on the black areas. Isn't that amazing? Now, there's one more way to do it and that is using a brush and overlay as a blend mode, but that's another way to do it, right? So easily we are filling up the areas that were left out. How wonderful is that? Now, the only change 
that mid-tones will make. If you choose mid-tones here, it will be a little less intense. That's it. Even if you are in the burn tool and you're removing the excess from the outside, if you choose mid-tones, it will be just a little, you know, less intense than the shadows, right? I prefer choosing the shadows when you're in the burn tool. Choose the shadows and control the exposure. And when you're in the dodge tool, choose the highlights and then control the exposure from here. So we have created a very nice mask around here. So hold the Alt R option, click on the mask, have a look, so perfect, so nice. Now, let me give you one more solution. Let's go back. There's one more tool which can solve this if you are looking for a softer edge. If you want to learn one more tool, let's go back by pressing Control Alt Z, Command Option Z. If you're using Photoshop CC 2019, it would be just Control Z or Command Z. So let's get back. All right, so here we are back. Here we still have the halos and there's one more great tool. And that is tool number two is the smudge tool. Yes, the smudge tool. So select the smudge tool, actually tool number three, but tool number one was a group of two tools, but then again, doesn't matter. Select the smudge tool and make sure the mask is selected. You can also control the strength from here and you can push the mask in very easily. So make sure the strength is low, 20% or somewhere around that. You can increase it any time and have a look. We are just pushing the mask in. This is great when you're looking for a soft edge as it gives you a much more natural look. Have a look, this image has a shallower depth of field. So in that case, this one, the smudge tool would work way better than the other one. Right here we have our fingers, so we need hard edges. In that case, I will change the tool back to the previous one. What was the tool? That was the burn tool and the dodge tool. So with the burn tool, I will remove the excess from here and with the dodge tool, I'll get some of the details back. So have a look, these details are lost. So you're gonna just paint over there, but it's not working. Why is this not working? With the dodge tool selected, always make sure highlights are selected. Now that would work for you. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Let's go back to the mask. With the dodge tool, we are not supposed to be able to paint in the black areas and bring white. If you choose shadows, it's gonna paint there. Even with the burn tool, what we wanna do, we wanna remove the excess by making sure that shadows are selected so that we don't accidentally paint on the white areas. However, if you choose the highlights, it's gonna paint on the white areas. So beware of that. Let's move back to the smudge tool. You're just simply pushing it in, that's it. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask to bring it back. Just simply push it in. Now it's time for the hair. The sweater and everything looks amazing. It's time for the hair. But with the hair, the problem is not the masking. The masking is absolutely fine. You can of course try the burn tool and then just, let me just select the burn tool and then choose the shadows and then try this area with a low exposure, something like that. But that way we are just frying away the hair and it's not looking right, you know? It's just not looking right. With the hair, the problem is not the masking. The masking is perfect, but the hair is so thin that it takes the color of the background. And to be able to tackle that, we need to paint over it. So simply create a new layer by clicking on the new layer button. And then all you have to do, very simple, take the brush and then make sure it's a soft round brush. With the soft round brush, make the brush a little bigger, opacity and flow at 100, and then take a sample from this hair and just paint on the outside. But we wanna limit it just to the hair, right? And just to the subject. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two, it creates a clipping mask. Now take a sample and paint outside. Take a sample and paint outside, you see? Don't worry about the inside at this instant, we'll take care of that later. Now, if you're having trouble taking samples, just make sure when you select the eyedropper tool, sample all layers or current and below is selected. And sample size should be three by three or five by five, not point sample. Take back the brush and hold the Alt or Option, click to take a sample and then paint. Fine, that looks wonderful. Now, what also you can do, you can take the clone stamp tool, make sure sample current and below is selected and then take a sample by holding Alt or Option, click to take a sample you can just paint this area. Now there's a problem over there, you need to paint it with the brush, but on the inside you can easily use this tool to really fill that area up. Make sure hair is in the same direction, otherwise it's gonna look fake. Here it's looking fake, so simply take the brush and you might have to take a sample and fill it gently. It should not look flat. Now let's go back to the clone stamp tool. 
If an area is just not looking right as I can see right here, so what you can do, have a look, the hair is turning in this moment. So simply I will take a sample from here and I might have to turn it around. So how do we turn it around? Easy. Shift, Alt and the arrow bracket key left or right to turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. So now, right now I'm turning it anti-clockwise. And once it looks good to you, you can just paint over there. And if it doesn't still look good to you, maybe you can try once again. There we go. Maybe right here. That area looks good right now. Now we need to reset that. So go to window, clone source, see the angle that we have done. Click on reset to reset the angle. And then you can just take a sample from somewhere else, maybe right here and replace that area. Now it looks pretty nice. Now take a sample from here as well. You need to fill that area. So that's how you kind of fill the area and make the hair look better. So similarly right here, we will try our best. Now I can take the brush and take a sample and fill up the inside single hairs as well. Just have to paint. There we go, as easy as that. So if I turn this off, you'll be able to see it was just not looking right. If I turn this back on, we have gotten rid of that. Now I would expect you to take a little more time and do it properly. We did it really, really fast. So that's how to take care of the halos in Photoshop. So the first tool that we worked with was the burn tool, right? Burn tool was to remove the excess white inside of the mask. And when you choose the burn tool, always make sure shadows is selected and then control the exposure. To fill in the extra whites, if an area was missing whites and if an area was left out, you can choose the dodge tool. And when you choose the dodge tool, make sure highlights are selected and then you can control the exposure and then paint. Also along with that, you can also use the smudge tool to push stuff in. So inside of the mask, you can actually tuck it in just like that. That's an alternative way to remove the halos. And I especially like it when you need a shallow depth of field. Now with the hair, most of the time masking is all right, but the hair is so thin that it takes up the color of the background. So you might have to create a new layer with the help of the brush, the clone tool, rotating the clone, just fill up those extra areas. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.